today's uh, lecture is titled uh, an overview of geometric modeling. Uh, earlier we have seen uh, in our introductory lectures that uh, geometric modeling uh, forms a basis for uh, integration of many of the CAD CAM activities. So, in the first three lectures uh, in this particular course, uh, we looked at uh, geometric modeling applications in design in manufacturing and that it also forms a basis for integration of these activities. So, from today onwards uh, in next few lectures, we will look at uh, basics of geometric modeling uh, like what do you mean by geometric modeling, uh, what are the various representations for uh, representing geometric entities like curves, surfaces and solids and how these representations are used uh, particularly in design and manufacturing applications is the subject of this particular uh, today's lecture. Now, geometric modeling can be uh, defined as uh, computer compatible and mathematical representation of geometry. Uh, if you really look at this particular definition, there are uh, two aspects, one is uh, computer compatibility, this is uh, a must, second is a mathematical representation of geometry. If uh, if I if these two can be fulfilled in any definition, I can call it as a geometric modeling. Now, one can always give uh, a mathematical definition which is not computer compatible or I can have a representation which is used purely for visual representation of uh, the geometric object. So, if I look at these representations which are uh, uh, like which fulfills only one of the requirements. Uh, then that is not what we are looking for, we are looking for something which is uh, which can fulfill both. For example, if I look at uh, uh, a mathematical definition to geometry, uh, we study in our schools and colleges uh, a, a complete course on uh, solid geometry or coordinate geometry, uh, which is basically concerned with mathematical representation of geometric entities like line, circle, conics, also uh, surface entities like uh, cylindrical surface, conical surface or a spherical surface. So, we study about uh, how these are mathematically represented uh, in our uh, coordinate geometry course or three dimensional solid geometry course. So, uh, these representations are mathematical, but uh, they are not uh, really computer friendly. That means, what I intend to do with this geometry cannot be fulfilled by these definitions directly. So, I am looking for uh, a better definition where uh, I am able to use the mathematical representation also for uh, doing some calculations which are related to CAD CAM or uh, also to use this representation for visually displaying uh, on let us say a computer screen. And uh, if I go by other definition that is uh, I can always give or I can always uh, visually represent a three dimensional picture on a computer screen uh, without going into mathematical definition also it is also possible. So, even that is not enough. So, we are looking for something which is a combination of uh, this thing. So, if I just put this picture uh, and say uh, what does this particular picture represent? Is it a two dimensional figure or a three dimensional figure? What would be your answer? Okay. It is okay. Somebody okay. Some people are saying it is three dimensional and some people are saying it is two dimensional. Then there is there are a few people who say like it can be both. Now, purely looking at a picture, you cannot really make out whether it is two dimensional or three dimensional. For example, if I look at this particular figure, this figure can be constructed uh, using a set of lines which are drawn in a plane which can give me an effect of a three dimension. For example, if you look at this particular thing you have uh, 4 plus 3 uh, that is 7 plus 2, 9 lines have been drawn uh, to basically give you a feeling of a three dimensional object. So, these 9 lines can be drawn in a plane and say that oh, here is an object which is looks like a three dimensional object or alternatively I may have really had a three dimensional representation for this that means, I have actually constructed a geometric entity like a cuboid or a box and then I have removed the hidden lines okay, and then are able to show this particular as a three dimensional representation with hidden lines removed. Now, what basically implies here is that what you see is not what uh, is correct 
how it is represented internally uh, let us say as a file or as an internal representation is what uh, we are concerned. So, when we say a mathematical representation there can be a purely a visual representation without uh, mathematical also or uh, like you may have seen that uh, many of the pictures or sceneries or backgrounds you can always create a three dimensional effect but there is no mathematical representation for that it is purely a visual kind of it. We are not interested in that either what we are looking is something which can give me a geometric definition at the same time the geometric definition should be uh, computer friendly enough to do uh, things which I need to do as a part of CAD CAM applications. So, that is what is basically the objective of studying geometric modeling as a part of this lecture. Uh, geometric modeling is a vast subject and uh, in terms of studying this particular subject uh, we what we basically do is to look at uh, how are various uh, geometric entities in terms of curves, surfaces and solids are represented. Okay. Uh, the representational aspects of curves and surfaces have some similarities okay. uh, like sometimes uh, geometric representation or geometric modeling of curves and surfaces together is can be classified as surface modeling or modeling of uh, uh, you can say free form curves and surface entities etcetera. Whereas, representation for solids is very different from that of curves and surfaces in CAD CAM applications. Okay. Uh, suppose, if I am giving a definition for a curve I can always extend it to surface one more one dimension higher and I can also extend it to solids, but it is usually not done for certain basic reasons. So, we will look at those aspects why representation for curves and surfaces is slightly different or uh, why there is a different representation which is used uh, which is not used for solids. Okay. So, we will be studying about this first we will take up uh, study of curves and surfaces and then we will go for representational aspects of solid objects. Now, in terms of this study uh, you will come across uh, for example, if I am looking at curves and surfaces particularly we may be looking at some of the geometric entities with which we are already aware of okay. like starting from our schools etcetera we study about many geometric entities like a line or a circle or a conic or if it is a surface like it can be a plane or a cylinder or a sphere or a cone. So, we are already familiar with uh, some aspects of these geometries which are usually called as a standard geometries or uh, more so what we call as a known forms. But, CAD CAM also deals or when you have to use a geometric modeling for product design and manufacturing applications, one may have to deal with those surface features or those surface entities which are not one of the standard forms. Usually, they are called as a free form, uh, free form curves and surfaces. So, what we would be looking as a part of geometric modeling is uh, start with known forms, just quickly revise those forms and then go to uh, what we call as a free form curves and surfaces and then once we have uh, a complete representation for all types of entities then we we study about how these representations can be used to automate certain design and manufacturing applications. So, that will be the subject of this thing and uh, as I said curves and surfaces will be treated almost uh, as one entity and solids will be treated as a separate entity in terms of this particular study. Now, study of curves, surfaces and solids is uh, not necessarily the like domain of uh, a CAD CAM courses. Uh, this is also a subject of uh, courses in computer graphics okay, where uh, one would be interested how to visually represent an object and also use a mathematical definition, but not necessarily for design and manufacturing applications. So, the subject of geometric modeling has uh, evolved along with computer graphics. So, you will also see a lot of uh, graphics related uh, terminology as well as uh, uh, concepts which are coming uh, when we study about geometric modeling uh, in this particular course. Now, uh, when it comes to representing curves and surfaces, uh, we know that uh, like we are aware of different types of representations which uh, one can use. Okay. For example, uh, we have what is called as an implicit representation uh, which we study in our uh, geometry courses 
We also study about explicit representation, which is also a subject of uh, courses on geometry and also parametric representation. We are familiar with um, parametric representations for some of the geometric entities. Now, one has to basically choose one of these three or let us say a combination of these representations for CAD CAM applications. Okay. Now, for example, if I take an example of this, so what you see here is uh, a, an entity like circle which is represented in all three representations. So, if it is an implicit representation, I can have an equation like uh, x square plus y square minus r square is equal to 0, where uh, a curve is represented as a function of like f of x y is equal to 0 is what is the representation or I can have an explicit representation where you try to model a curve as y as uh, y equal to a function of an x. Okay. So, the same circle can also be represented as uh, in an explicit representation which is shown here. Then you are also familiar with parametric representation of uh, circle in terms of uh, let us say r cos theta or r cos t or r sin t where t is the parameter which is varying um, for the variable for a curve. Now, among these three representation, now each one may have an advantage or disadvantage and uh, may be one suitab more suitable for CAD CAM application than the other. So, we will look into that aspect as we go along. Similarly, you have another example here like uh, you have an equation of uh, a plane uh, which is given here. So, it is a surface entity either I can represent it in a implicit form as a x plus b y plus c z plus d is equal to 0, where you are using a function like f of x y z is equal to 0 or I can also say z as a function of x and y uh, which is shown here as an explicit representation or I can also have uh, a parametric representation where every point on a plane uh, like every coordinate uh, point on a plane x y z can be represented as a function of two variables which is uh, u and w. Uh, it is true that uh, like whenever we represent uh, a curve or a surface in a parametric fashion like whenever we have let us say x y or z which is uh, which is uh, basically has one parameter it can be classified as a curve. Whenever you have two parameters okay, like u and w as it is shown here. So, it becomes a surface and we can extend it to higher dimension. I can have x, y, z which are functions of three parameters which can uh, be used to represent a solid object. So, uh, we will be looking at uh, these three representations and to look at which is more appropriate for CAD CAM application. Now, it is almost universally believed that among the three representations parametric is the one which is most widely used okay, uh, for certain strong reasons uh, which we will look into. Uh, is uh, why parametric representation has an edge over implicit and explicit representation for CAD CAM applications. But when we are studying about parametric representation and its advantages, uh, we should be aware that implicit and explicit representations too have uh, certain advantages. So, it is not necessary to say that parametric representation is the only representation. I may use a combination of these for a given application also. But more so a parametric representation for most of the applications. So, let us look at uh, why parametric representation, okay. what are the advantages uh, over let us say other two representations which are shown for curves and surfaces uh, in our next part of the lecture. Okay. The first advantage of uh, parametric representation is that uh, it completely separate the roles of uh, dependent and independent variables like when you for example, when I write an implicit or explicit uh, representation which is uh, which involves x, y or z, uh, you have one which is like dependent on the other. Whereas, when I am giving let us say an uh, parametric representation like x, y, z which are functions, you are basically looking them looking at them independently. So, how x varies as a parameter of t is of not much concern to you like how y varies with let us say a parameter which is there. So, the three coordinates can be independently written and uh, they can be changed if I want to change let us say a curve or a surface. So, 
this is one of the major advantages uh, you can say in terms of parametric. So, instead of looking at equation as a whole, you are looking at the independent uh, aspects of x, y, z, how they vary as a part of this particular thing. And uh, another of course, a very uh, interesting aspect of uh, this kind of uh, independent variables is uh, the equation which can be given for let us say a geometric entity can be extended to higher dimensions <coughs> very easily. Like if I say uh, like given let us say x is equal to r cos t, y is equal to r sin t, z is equal to h, what do they represent? Okay. What geometric entity? Somebody may say it is a cylinder, no it is a circle or no, no it is a solid cylinder. I would say it can be anything. For example, if you look at uh, the values which are given at the bottom for uh, R, T and H, R is fixed which is 5 units, T is equal to pi and Z is equal to 20. If I substitute these in the equation, I get a unique value for X, Y, Z. So, it is a point, it is a point. Uh, it is not uh, a curve, it is not a surface or it is not a solid. So, you have a three parameters, but how you vary, which are the parameters which actually vary and which are the ones which are actually fixed will decide whether this these equations, the three equations for x, y, z which are given here will represent whether it is a, a curve, surface or let us say a solid entity. Now, I can always vary uh, one of the parameters keeping the other two parameters constant. Okay. Now, if I do that, then I am going for one dimension higher than let us say a single point, a specific point which is mentioned. So, uh, you will be representing let us say a curve. Now, if I go to that, I have the same equations, but if you look at the parameters, r is fixed which is still 5 units, z is fixed which is 20 units whereas, t is a variable. Okay. T varies from let us say minus pi to pi. Uh, so, you have three equations which are functions of a single variable, we know what is the entity which it represents. Okay. It is a circle. Okay. So, uh, because t is varying from minus pi to pi, so I, I, can, I can call it as uh, a circle. Now, I can extend this to higher dimensions too. And you get different uh, representations by fixing a different uh, entities. For example, in these equations, instead of fixing let us say a variable t, okay, uh, instead of varying let us say a variable t, I may have varied let us say a, for example, either r or h. If I do that, what will I get? I will get a straight line instead of a circle. So, parametric directions like what basically it says that you have one parametric direction which is more like a circle, other two parametric direction which is like straight lines. I either by varying r alone or h alone, I will get a straight line which is basically a straight line entity. So, uh, you can like it is basically a three parametric directions which are a combination of two lines and one circle uh, which is there. I can go to one more dimension higher, what you see here is r is equal to 5 which is fixed, whereas two parametric variables uh, that is t and z are varying uh, within certain range. t varies from minus pi to pi and uh, z varies from 0 to 20. So, what does this represent now? It is a cylindrical surface. Okay. So, it is not a, a solid cylinder, it is a cylindrical surface uh, where the radius of the cylinder is fixed as uh, 5 units. Instead of these two, I would have chosen some other combination also. Okay. Like uh, what happens if uh, I vary let us say uh, other two variable instead of uh, t and z, suppose if I vary let us say t and r, okay, I keep z as a fixed. So, you get a circular disk okay, where uh, the z is constant. So, it is again like a planar entity it is uh, a surface entity with this or I may have gone for uh, varying r and z keeping the t as a constant, get a rectangle. Okay. So, that is again a plane entity. So, you are basically choosing a combination of these two. We have 
two parametric directions which are lines, one is a circle. So, if I take two lines, I will get a rectangle, one line and a circle, either I will get a cylindrical surface or let us say a circular disc. So, one can have a combination of any of these two entities and you know each case you get a surface as a result of this. So, it is very clear that uh, whenever we have a parametric representation, if uh, x, y, z are functions of a single variable as we have seen in our earlier representation, if I vary any one of them, I, I get always a curve entity like either a straight line or a circle as we have seen earlier. Now, if I vary any two of those, I always get a surface entity which may be a rectangle or circular disc or a cylindrical surface. I can go uh, to one more higher dimension where uh, you are varying all three parameters ok. R is also is varied between 0 and 5. Then I have let us say uh, T which is varied between minus pi and pi and Z which is varied between 0 and 20 ok. So, what does this represent? it is a solid cylinder. Uh, now, instead of let us say r which is varied from 0 to 5, let us say I vary the r value which is let us say from 3 to 5. So, you still get a solid object, but this time it is not a solid cylinder, but it is a hollow cylinder ok. So, uh, since these parametric equations are functions of three variable, where all the three variables uh, are like all the three parametric uh, uh, entities are being varied. So, you get a solid object which is there. The same concept can be extended to higher dimensions too ok. Now, one can also say that uh, for example, I have uh, a parametric representation which is a function of four variables or more than four variables too ok. That may not have really a meaningful solid uh, object as far as uh, uh, let us say a geometric modeling is concerned but in some cases it is used. For example, uh, I would like to represent let us say a solid cylinder as it is shown here and this solid cylinder is moving in space and when it is moving in space, I also have a function which is like a time. So, I can bring one more variable which is r, t, z and as well as uh, let us say another variable which is time. So, I can have uh, let us say a solid uh, or I can represent a motion uh, which are functions of four variables. So, one can extend this to higher dimensions uh, too, but in most of the cases this kind of representation are used for study of curves and surfaces uh, that is what uh, we are actually looking at. Now, in explaining this I have taken a very simple example of uh, let us say uh, parametric equation ok. The same thing can be extended to other entities too it is not necessarily for uh, let us say a cir circle cylindrical surface or a solid cylinder, but uh, it is true with any uh, parametric entity where uh, if I go for uh, parametric equations which are functions of three parametric variables, it is always a solid. It may or may, may not really give me a meaningful solid, but it is a solid. Another major advantage of uh, parametric representation is that it offers more degrees of freedom uh, for controlling shape of curves and surfaces. Like uh, I have given two you can say uh, curves here um, which are uh, y as a function of x and x y as a function of parameter. So, what you see is two different types of representation one which you call as a explicit and second uh, I think sorry this is not implicit uh, what is shown here is it is a parametric form okay, it is wrongly written as implicit. So, this is a parametric form. Now, if I look from explicit and parametric form uh, both these things basically represent a polynomial which are cubic in nature ok. A cubic equation in explicit form and again a cubic equation which is in parametric form where x and y which is varied. Now, what is the basic advantage in these two representation is like here you have four variables by giving different values to p, q, r and s, I get different cubic curves. Same thing is true by giving different values to a, b, c, d, e, f, g and h, I get uh, a different parametric cubic curves, but a designer has 
more variables to play with in the case of parametric than in the case of an explicit form. Here you have only a 4 whereas here you have uh, 8 variables. So, usually somebody who is in the business or who is concerned with uh, designing a curve for a specific application or designing a surface for a specific application would be interested to have as many degrees of freedom as possible or as many uh, variables as possible so that one can play around. And secondly you know that when you are actually playing with A, B, C, D you are only concerned with x coordinate and when you are doing with E, F, G, H you are only concerned with y coordinate. So, I can also have their roles which are independent in this particular case. So, same degree of polynomial which is cubic in nature because uh, we know that cubic is one of the most commonly used representation also like one can go uh, 1 degree below that is quadratic or I can go 1 level higher than cubic that is quartic or 1 level higher which is fifth uh, which we call as a quintic. But cubic is the most commonly used uh, representation for uh, representing many of the curves and surfaces. The reason is very clear uh, usually whenever we have a curve or a surface you look at the continuity requirement that means uh, the curve should be like you should be able to differentiate it at least two times okay. because whenever we have a first differentiation of x and y uh, we are looking at more like how the slope varies and when I am going for a second differentiation I am looking at curvatures. So, curvatures are also uh, curvature information is also very very important for many of the CAD CAM applications. So, cubic is more if I go for one order higher that is quartic uh, where you have uh, a polynomial uh, where you have terms like u to the power of 4 or x to the power of 4 it uh, really does not serve much purpose because your uh, mathematical calculations become uh, more and more complex at the same time uh, it also gives you a curvature continuity even one level uh, higher, but that is not really needed for most of the application. So, in most of the cases we represent cubic form another reason for using uh, a cubic form for polynomial more commonly is that uh, uh, up to cubic we can also get closed form solutions. I can get analytical solutions if I want to know what are the roots of let us say uh, a cubic equation it should be possible in many cases to know what are the roots in a purely analytical form or by uh, giving a formula. Whereas, once I go for a higher order than cubic then you have to use numerical methods and we know that whenever the numerical methods are used you have associated mathematical problems and also uh, there are other issues. So, cubic has advantage that it serves the you can say the this is the minimum uh, representation which serves uh, most of the applications and also I have analytical uh, solutions which are possible. So, this is most widely used representation for this. So, I have just chosen cubic as an example to represent this and of course, you can always other representations like quadratic and linear are subset of this by uh, making one or the other uh, variable 0 I get the other representations. And uh, coming back to the parametric representation uh, there is one more advantage which is uh, very evident is that uh, transformations are easier to apply. Now, in, in a CAD CAM uh, work or let us say when you are dealing with computer graphics you are not only dealing with geometric entities, but also their relative positions how one entity is placed with respect to other or how let us say an entity is defined with reference to some Cartesian or other coordinate systems or an object is initially constructed at some convenient position and then it is moved within the Cartesian space to some other position. So, when you move it it is parametric and other uh, whatever may be the mathematical representation it changes. So, this is usually called as a transformation. So, transformations are usually the most common transformations which we use in a CAD CAM applications are translation where you translate an object from one place to another place or rotation it can be about rotation about an axis which may be parallel to x y z axis or it may be an arbitrary axis which is inclined to x y z axis. You also uh, 
deal with uh, the in fact uh, translation and rotation are rigid transformations they do they do not change the shape of an object but i can also have uh, transformations where i am going to scale an object there are also transformations called shear where you are again changing the shape of an object so these are non rigid transformations so these are very commonly used in many of the cad cam and graphics applications and uh, we should also look at uh, that particular mathematical representation for geometry which uh, gives convenience in terms of applying transformations now this i am basically demonstrating giving a simple example like let's take a circle and uh, this is a circle with radius of 7 units now what is shown here is basically like uh, this is a parametric representation which is shown here and what is shown here is basically an implicit representation for the same circle if i suppose if the circle has a center 0 0 i can write down its parametric representation as x as 7 cos t and y as 7 sin t where t varies from for the complete 2 pi uh, as a parameter range the same equation in a implicit form can be written as x square plus y square Uh, minus 49 is equal to 0 now this circle is moved such that center now is at 4 and 3 instead of 0 and 0 now when you do a transformation that means the circle has been moved to another place where the shape is not changed size is not changed shape and size has not changed only thing is now it is at a different position with reference to a cartesian coordinate system which i have chosen what happens to the equation a parametric equation which was this thing so you just simply add the translational variables that is it is moving four units in the x direction three units in the y direction directly to a parametric representation so if i look at this particular aspect this right hand side basically denotes uh, the shape and size aspect of the entity which you are representing whereas 4 and 3 are translational variables or transformation variables which are used now let's look at the same for uh, when i am having a implicit representation the same equation okay uh, which is uh, same circle with a radius of 7 units with at a center has a different equation now now if i look at these two equations it's very difficult to make out first thing is it's the same entity okay because the transformation variables have mixed up with the actual representation of shape and size so it's very difficult to separate it out in fact circle is a very simple entity so you can still uh, make out by let's say uh, or one can still dig out what are the transformation variables and what the actual shape and size but when it comes to more complex geometric entities this becomes more and more complex since i am able to do that uh, this kind of uh, transformation variables are i am able to separate it out from shape and size aspects so this parametric representation has uh, a great advantage in this case now what is shown here is only a translation same thing is true for uh, rotation also okay like uh, in fact rotation is uh, you'll see a slightly a different uh, formula but basically what one uh, does is that you are actually representing a point as a vector in a parametric representation suppose if it is a uh, entity in a plane you have a vector has two components which is x and y suppose if it is in a space then you are looking at x y z so you are basically transforming a vector okay uh, in a parametric representation so the vector has three components x component y component and z component and uh, whereas you do not have any such representation here uh, implicitly and we know that uh, transformations are also i think uh, you are going to study later transformations can be represented in a matrix form like when a object is translated from one place to another what is the actual translation can be represented as a matrix form similarly a rotation can be represented in a matrix form and you are representing a point in a vector form so all the transformations can be represented as some kind of a multiplication of vectors and matrices and uh, we know that when it comes to particularly programming geometric entities or when i have to write a program where transformations and geometric uh, 
manipulation of geometric entities are involved, uh, vectors and matrices are very convenient to handle in programming rather than like uh, solving with uh, many of the algebraic entities uh, which are sometimes difficult to do. So, you can say that parametric representation gives you uh, a programmer friendly environment because you are able to represent the geometric entity as a vector and transformations as in a matrix form. The other advantage which you have uh, particularly with uh, uh, parametric representation is that uh, you are able to represent the objects that is curves and surfaces which are inherently bounded. Now, whenever we study about let us say a line uh, or give a representation, we, re we really do not look at uh, a line there is a starting point and then there is an end point for the line because in most of the CAD CAM applications one has to deal with let us say a line which has a fixed starting point and fixed end point. A line which extends infinitely in both the directions has not much meaning ok. You cannot have an object where there is a straight line which extends infinitely in both the directions. So, I want to put bounds on let us say any entity which I choose. So, since whenever you have a parametric representation you also try to represent the bounds which is the parameter which is being varied and what is the range of variation is also specified. So, you are primarily representing the bound entities like if I take this particular example, for example, uh, I have a circle which is r cos t and r sin t and uh, if I take let us say the range as minus pi to pi, I get a complete circle. Now, the same representation can be used to represent a circular arc, you do not have to have a different representation like imagine representing a circular arc in implicit or explicit form. It is very difficult to do it because uh, you do not have a separate representation or you do not have a provision for representing the bound entities. Whereas, by simply changing the parameter range to a different let us say minus pi to 0. Now, I am equation has not changed, but I am able to represent uh, let us say a circular arc instead of a complete circle and this is true with uh, many of the curves and situations, curves and surface situations where we would be doing it. Now, somebody can say it is also possible to put bounds in implicit and explicit representations by putting either range in x or y, okay. but it is not always true like uh, Firstly, when I am having a range in terms of x and y, I may have a multi valued functions. So, I may not be able to represent this uniquely, that is also a one of the problem. I think I will uh, refer to that sometime later in our lectures. So, uh, why we have a difficulty in representing let us say segments in a implicit and explicit representation, whereas it is much convenient to do uh, in terms of uh, let us say. Now, this kind of representation also helps you when uh, I am trying to find the intersection of curves for example. Let us say if I am trying to find out let us say whether two arcs intersect or not, you are actually not trying to find out whether the two corresponding circles intersect or not, you are interested in only the arc segments. So, I can always make use of this parameter range to know uh, because corresponding circles may be intersecting, but the arcs may not be intersecting. So, such a situation if I want to distinguish then uh, probably I may have to uh, I have advantage in using a parametric representation here. The one more advantage which you see here uh, which parametric representation has is in terms of calculation of slopes or some of the geometric properties. If I represent let us say a curve uh, in an implicit or explicit form and you are trying to find out what is the slope of a curve at different places or suppose if I take a circle and I am trying to find out what is the slope at different points, I may have a situation where the slope becomes infinity or I will have a point where the slope becomes uh, infinity. Now, suppose if I, I am writing a program, I am writing a computer program to calculate slope at various places the moment you land up at a point where the slope is infinity your program fails because 
the number infinity is something which cannot be handled by a programming languages okay. that is something which cannot be easily defined. So, in order to evaluate a slope like if I use a formula like dy by dx which is a very most common form I have a problem. So, I cannot have a check uh, like even to implement a check whether the slope is becoming infinity or not is also difficult because you cannot say that if dy by dx is equal to infinity kind of logical statements are not possible. If I am using a parametric representation you are actually trying to take two components separately that is whatever is the dy by dx which you are trying to represent you are splitting as dy by du divided by dx by du whenever the slope becomes infinity dx by du becomes 0, 0 is a number which can be handled easily in a programming languages. So, I can always put a check if dx by du becomes 0 or equal to 0 then you have something to do that means this is the case of uh, an infinite slope and this case has to be handled separately. So, the advantage that 0 has an advantage over infinity in terms of handling in programming languages that is possible with parametric <coughs> representation uh, that is one of the advantage. It is not necessarily restricted to slopes we may have a many situations where you may end up uh, with values like infinity in many cases uh, whereas, those can be very easily handled um, when it comes to uh, a parametric representation. Then of course, one of the uh, very clear advantages a major advantage as far as CAD CAM uh, applications is concerned is in terms of uh, discretizing an entity. I have again taken an example of a circle in most of these cases I have taken a circle because this is one entity with which we are already familiar okay, and most of the advantages can be demonstrated using this single example. Here is a circle which is uh, shown and uh, you have an implicit representation for this circle okay. the radius of the circle is given as 8 units center of the circle is uh, 0 0 which is shown here. Now, you have both implicit representation and explicit representation. Now, this circular entity has to be approximated with let us say straight line this we do quite often in CAD CAM uh, applications for example, I have a curve which may be a circle or which may be any free form curve and uh, in order to display this particular curve or in order to approximate this particular curve I take number of points on the curve and join them by straight lines and say that you have a piecewise linear approximation for a curved entity. Now, whenever for example, uh, I have let us say an algorithm for which works only for polygons not for curved entities. I can always take a circle and uh, convert into a polygon with number of uh, uh, edges and still apply the same algorithm. So, there are many situations where uh, I can basically go and uh, we need to do this kind of discretization of a curved entity in terms of straight line. Same thing is done for surfaces also I may have a free form surface and this free form surface has curved uh, geometry. So, instead of dealing with a curved geometry I would like to approximate it as let us say uh, facets which are basically planar or a polygonal faces. So, you try to approximate a surface entity with uh, a piecewise polygonal approximation. Okay. Now, whenever we do that uh, there are problems with uh, implicit and explicit representations which is clearly shown here as uh, a simple example. Now, one thing is suppose if I am trying to take number of I want to display this particular circle. So, in order to display this particular circle I use a piecewise linear approximation by calculating computing number of points on this circle and joining them by straight lines. If I use a representation like this how do I compute the how do I go about let us say computing points on a circle maybe I will vary one of the variables let us say I vary the x I know the range of x for example, in this case that is it goes from uh, minus 8 to plus 8. So, I can take this particular range and try to calculate y. So, I will get number of points and join them by straight lines to do that, but I have a problem 
firstly when I give a value of x in some places I have two values for y. So, which one to choose that means I have to keep tracking in both the directions or I may have a cubic curve where you have an implicit and explicit equation which is cubic in nature. So, if I give a x then I have three roots and I have to evaluate all the three roots some may have a meaning full roots like that means I may have a real roots or I may have uh, imaginary uh, roots too. So, I have to keep track of uh, like how the curve is moving and if there is a multi valued functions how to track this particular curve uh, is also a big issue. Whereas, in a parametric uh, representation whenever you have a curve when I move from let us say one point on the curve which I call as a starting point to end point one thing which is continuously varying is a parameter. So, just by varying one parameter I am able to get as many points as possible uh, which do. So, if I want to draw let us say do an approximation of this circle as a, a piecewise line. So, what I will do is uh, I will vary the t here I know what is the range of t t has a range from let us say 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi uh, depending on how you represent and uh, I take small intervals of t and compute x and y values between 0 and 2 pi and I get number of points and I can join them to get let us say a linear approximation to this particular circle. Whereas, you have a difficulty when I go for implicit and explicit. Moreover, the you also have a some kind of a uniformity when I am using a parametric representation. Like if I even if I am able to track let us say both the directions for a given value of x if I have two values of y if I take equal intervals of x values I have highly unequal intervals for the y values okay. that means a small change in x value here okay, results in a large difference in y value whereas here is if I take a x value large difference in x value somewhere towards the center results in only a small difference in y value. So, you have a non uniform kind of uh, variation for x and y if I vary the one variable and try to calculate the other variable. When it comes to parametric representation you have an advantage ok it is not true for all the entities ok for circle it is ok, but for others it is not necessary that by varying a t or by varying a variable I will always get equal size line segments ok, but it would be much more uniform than implicit or explicit representation in many cases. So, by varying a t as let us say uh, certain value taking let us say uh, either uh, a interval of let us say 5 degrees or 10 degrees or 1 degree depending on my requirement I am able to get the straight line approximation which is more uniform and which is has a unique value. So, computing becomes much easier uh, like it for example, if I have to write a program to display a line as a series of circles naturally I would prefer this rather than using that as a mathematical equation for writing a program. Now, approximation of uh, a curved entity in terms of lines and polygons is uh, not only for the display purpose okay. display is one aspect uh, like as I said. Uh, circle can be approximated as lines in fact, surfaces also can be approximated as polygons this is uh, one of the extensively used you can say uh, tool in computer graphics. Whenever you see uh, let us say an object which is represented uh, let us say a good scene a computer graphics scene which you see many a times the object looks like a curd, but actually internally it is basically approximated as a series of triangles or series of polygons uh, because in most of the computer graphics algorithms whenever I do operations like rendering etcetera it is uh, I have an advantage in dealing with triangles and polygons than with curved entities. So, one of the most common uh, you can say aspects in computer graphics for display purpose is approximate let us say a curved surface with a series of triangles or series of polygons it is a uh, many a times the this approximation is so smooth that you cannot even notice when you see an object on the computer screen ok uh, like it for uh, a human eye it almost looks like a curved surface, but internally it is approximated. Now, this kind of approximation is not necessarily for purely visual 
purpose or displaying or for computer graphics applications. You also need this kind of approximation for applications like uh, manufacturing. For example, if uh, I have to generate let us say NC tool path, for example, I have a curved geometry and I have to take my tool along a curved geometry, uh, let us say for machining purpose. So, what you do is uh, in a typical CNC machine machining programming that means a part programming either you use a linear interpolation or let us say a circular interpolation like a circular interpolation basically uses codes like Z02 or Z03 whereas uh, uh, linear uses Z01. Now any entity which is not line or a circle is again uh, approximated as a piecewise circle, piecewise uh, linear approximation. So, if I have a free form curve, I take number of points on the curved entity and then join them by series of straight line tool paths to get uh, let us say a curved path. So, that is a very common. So, approximating uh, a curve or a surface as uh, uh, let us say piecewise linear or polygonal approximation is not necessarily for display, it is also true for uh, uh, an NC tool path calculation. So, here also we see that a parametric representation has an advantage. Okay. So, what I basically try to do uh, particularly in this lecture is to give you enough inputs to convince that okay, a parametric representation is the way to go for CAD CAM applications, but at the same time uh, we should not really uh, like undermine the other representation. There are situations where implicit or explicit representations have an advantage. For example, I can give you taking the same example of a circle. Suppose if I have a point, I want to know whether this point is inside the circle or outside the circle. How do I do that? Or I have a straight line and then there is a point. I want to know whether the straight line is on the which side of the straight line, okay, whether it is on the left or right. So, in those situations you have other representations which may be useful. For example, if I want to know whether a point is inside or outside a circle, I can use explicit representation very conveniently. Substitute the coordinates of the point in the equation of a circle and check whether the value which you are getting is 0, negative or positive. So, depending on that you can say the point is either on the curve or outside the curve or inside the curve. Whereas, if I want to use the parametric representation for that. I may have, I may not be able to use it that conveniently as I do it. So, uh, summary is that uh, parametric representation has major advantages, but a combination may be useful in many situations. So, I may um, try and opt for uh, a combination of these representation if uh, the other representation also has an advantage. So, we basically try to look at uh, 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 the representation and their advantages. Now, what we will do is uh, carry forward this uh, like we will take up uh, start with representation for curves, how some of the curves are represented parametrically and then we move on to surfaces. Once we have finished with uh, curves and surface representation both for the known forms as well as free form, then we will take up uh, some applications where these curve and surface representations are used to automate or to uh, take certain decisions in a CAD CAM environment. So, that would be the uh, like sequence of lectures which would be following starting from today. So, if you have any questions please uh, raise them. So, any questions or is this clear? Okay, then I will somebody yeah any questions okay then i'll stop it here and uh, we'll take up with uh, parametric representation of curves in our next lecture mm -hmm.